So I just got back from a week of fishing and camping up on Penn's Creek. One of the flies I took with me was the easy blue wing olive that I tied up for the channel last week. Now the hatch charts did specifically say that this fly should be out in pretty small sizes, and they were. I had a couple of pretty good days with this fly. Now what the hatch charts did not say is that there would also be a lot of sulfurs out. Now maybe they weren't technically sulfurs, but for all practical purposes, they were a whitish, light, yellowish, cream-colored mayfly in a size 12 and 14. And I didn't have any with me because, you know, I wasn't expecting to fish a sulfur hatch, but I did have my fly tying bag, so I sat down in the camper and tied up a bunch of these in size 14. And they did pretty well for me. Now, I didn't catch a lot of big fish with this thing, but it did catch enough fish that it kept it interesting for me. And I'm calling this the easy sulfur because I'm cheating a little bit with the wing, just like I did with the blue wing olive last week. And the fly floated really well. It was easy to see, and it fooled enough fish that I just might make this my go-to sulfur come this spring here in Maryland. Now, I don't have much footage of me catching fish with this fly, but stick around after the tie. I do have some pretty good footage of me hooking into a nice brown with one of those size 18 blue wing olives. So there it is in the vise, what I've been calling my easy sulfur, very similar to the blue wing olive we just tied. Now, I am tying this on a size 14 because that's the size I saw on Penn's Creek last week. 12s or 14s I think would have been fine. So it's a standard length barbless dry fly hook and I'm going to use a cream thread. I'll lay a base down to the start of the bend. Now the tail going to be pretty long and a white or cream or a light ginger hackle barbs right here. Let's go about a body length. And let's take our thread up a couple eye lengths back and tie in our wing. And this is where I'm cheating. I'm going to use some white Antron fibers here. Antron, Z-Line, anything like that. It's going to be just fine right here. So go ahead and catch this in. Get a few wraps going back. And we're going to post it up just like a, a parachute. And what I've been doing, just like a parachute actually, putting a few wraps just around this post. Well, it's not exactly a post, it's a wing, but I mean, what's the difference? We're tying it just like a post. But go ahead and take your thread back to the tail, put some wax on it. Now some sulfur colored dry fly dubbing, and I'm going with a sulfur orange, which is kind of a yellowish orange. And this one is a microfine, so it's also a synthetic. It's not going to hold water. It's good for a dry fly. But put a noodle on here, maybe two inches. Doesn't have to be real long. And just wrap it up to, oh, a little bit behind the wing here. Now our dry fly hackle. Just a cream or a light ginger or anything really light that's going to work here. And I'm going to catch this in right behind the, the wing. And catch it in so that I can get two wraps, at least two behind it. Maybe three, we'll see. Probably three behind it and then two in front based on where I position this wing. And I do need to go ahead and trim this before I wrap the hackle. It'll be just a little bit easier to trim it now. And envision it being at least to the top of the hackle, maybe just a little bit longer. Now let's wrap this hackle and see what it looks like. Okay, that was two behind and two in the front. I think that's actually enough. I don't want to go much thicker than that. Now before I snip this, I'm just going to pull everything back and then try to make some room for my whip finish here. Now let's take care of this excess and see if we have any cleanup. I got a couple fibers going forward right here I might want to trim or singe, 
but as long as I can get my tippet up through there, and I think we can, we've got a fine fishable fly. So a little drop of head cement, and this guy's ready to fish. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Stick around a couple minutes if you want to watch me fishing on Penn's Creek last week. So this is really a lot bigger water than I'm used to fishing. It's thigh deep at, at most, but it's really wide and pretty strong current. So I'm not sure the best tactic to approach here, but what I've been doing is just coming out here and you know looking for bugs and fishing to rising fish. I'm going really lightweight today. This is a two weight. I've got nine foot of six X tippet on here. And I tied on a number 18 blueing olive. One of those I tied up just the other night for the channel. And I do see some fish rising out here, just right behind the camera, um, right where I'm pointing right now. Um, decent looking fish, I can't tell how big it is, but uh, yeah, let's, let's toss this little blue wing olive over there toward him, see if we can't entice him to eat it. Right out there about eh, 30, 35 feet in front of me is where I saw this fish rising. So let's go out here and see if we can't trick him. One of them came up for it right there. Let's see if, see if he's still hungry when next time this little bug gets down there in front of him. There's one. He came up for it. It's a decent fish. Was, this was probably the guy I saw rising over here. Got a pretty decent bend in my rod here. Oh yeah, nice fish. Let's don't blow him. Let's see if I can get downstream of him. He's going deep on me. Oh, what a nice fish. Come on, buddy. Got the net out. Come on, buddy. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, no, no, no. He's, he's wanting to run on me. He's wanting to run. Look at that. Come on now. Had to let him go out a little bit. Take in a little more line. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Got 6x on here, so I can't really muscle him. Just tire him out a little bit. Get him upstream of me. Got him, there we go, look at that. Settle down, buddy, I'll get this out of you. Settle down, settle down. Get this hook out of it. Try to measure them real quick. Tattoos covered. Finger to tattoo. So this is about 15 plus inches. See that guy right there? Nice looking brown. He's, he's good and healthy. Okay, thanks for sticking around. And I know catching big wild browns on small dry flies doesn't happen all the time. It certainly doesn't happen to me that often. But I'm taking this as a lesson to 
Not be afraid to go small when you need to. You just wouldn't think a size 16 inch fish would spend the energy that it needs eating something as small as an 18 off the surface. But there it is in its mouth. I guess we'll just never know what's gonna fool the fish on any given day. So thanks for watching y'all. We'll see you in a couple days.